Uh, so the last time I talked about Ms. Marvel was right after the pilot. And I'll have to say it's kept up the same standard. Uh, the fancy directorial tricks largely disappeared until episode 6, uh, but the quality of the acting continued. Uh, Kamala, Bruno and Naki are all developed over the series, and Kamala's parents go from stopping a going to a convention in episode 1 uh, to episode 6 where they give her a costume and tell her to go out and risk her life. Not quite sure how that happened, but it's welcome all the same. Uh, so it was great to see Kamala in costume for the first time uh, in the opening credits of Thor, Love and Thunder. Uh, I would have preferred to see it happen in the show, uh, but we have to wait until the final episode for that to happen. Uh, but it does not disappoint. It's just like in the comic, uh, even though the bright primary colours are usually frowned upon in live-action superhero shows. And the new version of Kamala's powers works better than expected, uh, with Green Lantern-style energy constructs rather than Mr. Fantastic's stretching ability. Uh, the villains are undoubtedly the low point of the show, uh, and I think that's intentional, really. Uh, they show up in episode 2 and are defeated by the end of episode 5, so clearly they're not meant to be the main focus. Uh, they're called The Clandestine, uh, which is the name of a rather obscure comic I haven't read, uh, but it's written by Alan Davis, who did good work on Excalibur and Captain Britain, so it might be worth checking out. Uh, here they're more a vehicle for allowing Kamala to explore her past, uh, and we get two episodes set in Pakistan. Even if they weren't really filmed there, it certainly looks authentic from what I can tell. Uh, it even goes back in town to become a generational family drama. And we learn quite a bit about Kamala's mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. I would have been quite happy spending six episodes on Kamala learning to be a superhero in Jersey City, uh, but this added scope takes it to a whole new level. Uh, the other villains are Damage Control, uh, who started off fairly benign in movies, uh, but now they've morphed into an evil government organisation tracking down anyone who uses superpowers. Uh, it feels more like the short lived X-Men show The Gifted rather than the MCU, and it's, it's a shame to see this universe go down the darker path, uh, but at the same time, you can see how it would open up a lot of interesting new storylines. So we'll see where it goes. The reveal that Kamala is mutant is a big surprise, uh, especially as she's an inhuman in the comics. Uh, but it's a great idea. Uh, the X-Men movies have suffered from going for quantity over quality, and even though I'm a big fan of them, I still haven't seen Dark Phoenix, or New Mutants for that matter. Uh, centering them around Kamala could be a good way to make the MCU X-Men movies stand out. Take a character you know and love and build an X-Men team around her. Welcome to the X-Men, Kamala Khan. Hope you survive the experience. Uh, but before then, there's a Marvel to look forward to. Uh, we got to see Brie Larson popped into Kamala's bedroom, which will presumably be recreated in the movie. Uh, it looks like they're going for the plot device for some of the older Captain Marvel comics, uh, where he would swap places with Rick Jones, leaving one of them stranded in the negative zone. And since there's no Rick Jones in this Marvel universe, which is a big oversight if you ask me, they've replaced him with Ms. Marvel. Uh, hopefully the two characters won't be separated all the time. Uh, you can imagine the pair's interactions would be a lot of fun on screen with Kamala fangirling all over the rather serious Captain Marvel. And maybe in the post credit scene she'll get an invitation to Xavier's school for Gifted Mutants. We shall see. Is it the best Disney Plus show yet? Uh, well, WandaVision started well, but lost its way towards the end. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier should have been a movie. Hawkeye was pretty good, but I don't particularly want to see any more of it. And I've already made six videos about Moonlight, if you want to see my opinion on that show. Ms. Marvel is the only one that left me wanting more. They've created such a rich world, full of great characters you want to see more of. I'd love to see more seasons of this, and hopefully I'm not the only one. Uh, but the next Marvel show is She-Hulk, uh, which is meant to be more of a half-hour comedy show, so I might not have that much to say about that one. Uh, in the meantime, there's plenty of good shows on the way. Uh, there's Paper Girls on Amazon Prime. Uh, there's Sandman on Netflix. Uh, the new Game of Thrones prequel. The new Lord of the Rings prequel. Another Star Wars prequel. Uh, so that's the sort of thing I'll be making videos about over the next few months. Although next week's video will be about classic Doctor Who, just to confuse the algorithm completely. So press subscribe if you don't want to miss that, or press like if you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next week. Bye.